Hi guys, I'm literally outside the Nigerian Embassy in London and I just finished getting an emergency travel certificate for my daughter and while I was in there I thought it would be a great idea for me to actually explain what the process was and some of the tips that I would advise on you guys if you're thinking about getting an emergency travel certificate. So much information from tips to the process, everything I will share once I get back home. But I just thought I'll do this intro to let you know that you know, I'm here. I think today is, is it 15th of November? I don't even know, but I'll put the dates on so you guys know. Um, if this video is something you definitely enjoy, make sure to give this video a huge thumbs up. Make sure to share it already. And yeah, definitely watch on. Once I get home, I'll create the video for you guys. Hi guys, so I am back home. It's been two days since that intro. And if you've not seen my face before, my name is Sassy Funke. I'm a Nigerian author. I recently just wrote a book called Lagos Travel Guide. It's the first ever high quality, locally created travel guide for Lagos, Nigeria. Hi guys, permit me to interrupt your amazing video that I know you're super excited to watch to bring you the details of the giveaway. I am giving away five signed copies of my book, Lagos Travel Guide, to five people. So each person will receive one signed copy. It is open internationally, so it doesn't matter where you are, you can enter this giveaway. The giveaway is easy to enter. All you have to do is one, go to the giveaway link in my description box, like that post for that link, Follow Sassy Funke and Lagos Travel Guide on Instagram. Tag a friend in the comment section. If you want an extra entry, you can also share that particular post in your Instagram story. Giveaway ends this Saturday. That's November 28th by midnight. And I'll be announcing the winners shortly after on my community page on YouTube and also on Travel to Ninja's Instagram page. I really hope you guys win. Let's go back to the video. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel here and give this video a huge thumbs up. Okay, so I've put some notes down on my phone here so that I make sure that I'm actually giving you all the information and I'm not jumping parts. But in this video, I'm essentially going to be sharing with you, first of all, what an emergency travel certificate is. Two, why I needed to get one. Three, the whole process from beginning to the end of how to get one. What happened on the day of me actually going to get one, how long it took for me to get the certificate. And finally, I'll also be sharing tips, things that, you know, if you didn't go through the process, you might not know this, things that will just make your process much, much easier at the High Commission in London. So firstly, what is an ETC, which is the acronym for Emergency Travel Certificate? It's basically a document that is issued to facilitate an applicant's immediate one-way departure to Nigeria only and is valid for 30 days from the date of issue. Essentially, if you don't have a passport, for example, maybe your passport expired, right, and you're trying to get to Nigeria, you know, quickly, you would be eligible to get an ETC. If you've lost your passport, you would be eligible to get an ETC too. And it's clear in this, this definition that it's only for 30 days. So if you plan to travel after 30 days, you can't get your ETC now. You have to get it when it's like within 30 days of your travel, if that makes sense. Second point, why did I need to get a travel certificate? I think I mentioned it in my initial intro that it's actually not for me. It was for my baby, right? I lost her passport, yes. As in, you don't understand how I'm beating myself. I'm still looking for it too. I lost her passport and planning to travel within 30 days and thought instead of me keep looking looking for it let me just try and get an emergency travel certificate so that i'm covered basically next point what was the process of getting an emergency travel certificate for me so i'll explain it from the beginning when i decided to get an emergency travel certificate the first thing i did was i went to the nigerian high commission london their website and on there obviously right now there's a lockdown but they had emergency numbers that you can reach out to. I tried calling these numbers for three days straight. I mean, when I called, there were three numbers. I, I called, one of them was switched off. Another one was ringing or it would be busy and I would keep trying and keep trying and keep trying for like two days and I didn't get anywhere. But the third day I was persevering and I called and somebody picked up. The gentleman was very lovely. I explained I needed a travel certificate that I was traveling soon, that my daughter was traveling soon. 
he asked me why I didn't like what happened, right? And I said, Oh, it's because I lost her passport. He said, Okay, because you lost her passport, you need to get um a police report amongst other documents that you need to get. And I'm going to link all the documents that you need to get in the description box because these were the same documents that were on the Nigerian um, I commission's website so the information on the website is actually valid like everything on there is what he told me over the phone that I should make sure I get and I really appreciated the fact that he actually took the time to list it out for me right he then said to me that there are only two days in the week that you can come to the embassy to get an ETC and those two days are Mondays and Thursdays this may change in the future so make sure you call to double check but I know this November, it was Monday and Thursdays, and it was any time between 10 and 1 p.m. So a three hour window for you to come through. So the next thing I did was basically to go through all the documents that I needed, and I can talk a little bit about what those documents were in case some of you are interested, right? So for you guys to locate exactly where on the website that you have to go to, first of all, it's the NigeriaHC.org the UK is the website you're going to and once you get on there you go to the immigration tab right and you look at under the immigration tab there's a requirements for e-passport that is on there so I'm gonna close this pop-up first and there you can see there's a section for emergency travel certificate right and basically here is where you see all the information and the requirements. So for example, requirements for ETC, a letter to the commission saying why you need this, two passport photograph, a police report, copy of, of lost stolen passport, lost stolen or misplaced passport, additional identification, guarantors, valid Nigerian passport, utility bill, airline tickets to Nigeria, 100 pounds in postal order. If the requirement is for a minor, which is my daughter, you need her original copy of her current passport if she's a dual citizen. So in that case, I also brought her British passport um, original and copy. Also original and copy of her birth certificate, which I took. And also a copy of her data for our parents' data page, one who must be at least a Nigerian. And a letter of consent. And also I, you have to download uh, an ETC form. So all the information is here. Obviously, some things do not apply to me. For example, the guarantor's valid Nigerian passport didn't apply to me. Letter from employer, additional from my education didn't apply to me. Utility bill for guarantor doesn't apply to, when I say to me, to her, to Visaya, I didn't need that. But I made sure I had everything ready. Like, I made sure everything to the T. Because the guy on the phone told me specifically, make sure you get everything ready. So I made sure that was ready. So what actually happened on the day for me, I took a train to London, I went to the Nigerian High Commission and I went to Charing Cross, um, I think Charing Cross and Embankment are the two London underground stations by the High Commission. So I went there and I typically, because I've been to the embassy before, I went to where the passport, you know by the bend, where the passport and visa, where you go and apply for that, right? I went to that door on the road. When I got there, there was nobody, there was no sight of anything happening there, which I was really confused about because there was no bell either to buzz. And I had to walk backwards because I noticed there were some men by another door that I had passed by. And I asked them to say, oh, I'm trying to get in. And they said, oh, buzz at this door here. So the door is before the door, the passport door, basically. And when I got there, there was an intercom and the man saw me and he said to me, what was I here for? I told him I was here to get an um, emergency travel certificate. And he basically tried to ask me, like, which documents do you have? And he was like, list the documents for me. So he wouldn't even let me in. Until so I started listing, I was like, hey, I have all the documents you're asking for. And he let me, he came over, he said, you know what, just wait, he's going to come to the door. He came to the door, started checking my documents before he actually let me into the embassy. When he noticed that I seemed to like have all the documents, he let me in and they took us, took me to this great hall. And when I got to the great hall, there were a lot of people, maybe around like, not a lot, like 15 people waiting there. And I was just told to sit down and I was really confused because I was sitting down and I was thinking, okay, do I get a ticket? Do I not get a ticket? What's happening? I had to ask one of the gentlemen that was sitting down to say, um, Bruce, 
you know, what, what do I do here? He said I should just wait that they'll get to me. So I could see that they were looking at some people's documents. There wasn't any like systemic sort of way of addressing everybody, but he did get to me maybe in 10 minutes. And I would say at this time it was about 10, 15, right? So when he got to me, he checked all my documents. He actually said, oh, I remember doing this passport. What happened? Do you lost your passport? Your daughter's passport already? I said, yes. You know, it was very polite. Checked all my documents, put everything together. And so at this point, I gave him my postal order of 100 pounds, which is the payment that you need to um, give. But he then asked me for the receipt. Guys, keep the receipts of your postal order. I did not know that I had to keep the receipt. He said you need the receipt. But he allowed me, like, I didn't have a receipt with me. I, I think I even threw it in the bin away. And he said the reason why he, they need the receipt at times is because a lot of people um, scam based on the re, um, postal order that have already cashed the money out and they're basically giving you a postal order that has no money in it. So that's why they need the receipt to verify the legality of the postal order basically at this point they basically all of us that were around 15 of us they piled our documents together to take as a batch and i would say they took everything around 10 50 right 10 50 they took a whole batch away i would say by the next hour 11 50 there were approximately like 30 people that had arrived in total and they started like the process again. In my mind though, I thought I'll be here latest, latest, latest two hours. I got my travel certificate at approximately 2 p.m. So it took literally, I got to the, um, it took approximately three hours and 45 minutes from the time I got there to actually getting this document. And I'll also be showing you what the document looks like in a second so you know what the travel certificate actually looks like. So what exactly is on an emergency travel certificate? Basically, it's an A4 sheet of paper, a bit of a brown paper with a Nigerian crest on it. It has some few identification codes. It has the person's passport photograph printed in the paper, right? This is, and it also states, this is to certify that the applicants are stated to me that he or she is a Nigerian and I have no reason to doubt his or her statement. This certificate is valid for a single journey to Nigeria. So it says it's valid for one journey to Nigeria. It says, states that it's leaving from Nigeria. Leave, it states that you're leaving from the UK to Nigeria. Also states that you must submit this document um, at the port of entry. It states the date of issue and also um, an immigration stamp. Um, it also states when the bearer was born, the place, and the year, the date of birth. Yeah, pretty much that's all um, that it states on there. So it's just a very simple document. This is it. It's a very simple document. Um, yeah. So now I'm going to talk to you about the tips I have with regard to getting an um, emergency travel certificate. The first tip is... First of all, there's no booking necessary, so you don't have to book online. Just go directly to the embassy. Make sure you get to the embassy at 10. I think it's important for you to get there at 10 because people that came after us, around like 11.30, I don't even know when they left the embassy because we were the first batch to be done. So if you don't want to spend your whole day there, get there at 10 o'clock. Don't get there at 10.30, don't get there at 11, 11.30, get there at the earliest at 10 o'clock. Make sure all your documents are intact. Like I'm going to leave the link down below. Make sure every document is intact. I'm going to also leave the link for the police report because some of you might think you have to go to a police station to get that. It's online. It takes five minutes to do a police report. You print it out. It costs a couple of pounds and that's it. If you lost your passport that in that case. Um, make sure your document is intact because there are so many people that came to embassy they were like oh oh I'm not photocopied oh I don't have this I don't have that and it's hard to start looking for scanning places across because they will not help you scan your document or get a photocopy in the embassy like forget about that it's not going to happen so just make sure you get every document intact because literally once I had that all I did the whole time was just sit and wait I mentioned this before, make sure you keep the receipts of your postal, postal order because it's necessary, even though they let me slide with it, like it's necessary. Another thing I didn't know, and I don't know if this is the case for everybody, right? Because 
I didn't, I didn't even consider taking my baby to the embassy because she's small, COVID and all that, right? So if your baby is a baby that cannot sign, or I think minors, I'm not sure minors in general can sign, but baby, you don't have to actually bring them to the embassy, which I think is something that would have been good to know in case I did bring her to the embassy, but I didn't even consider taking her. Like, I just thought it would be ridiculous to carry a baby through that. I didn't need to do that, which was great. Yes, and finally to restate that the ETC is only valid, valid for 30 days. So guys, that is pretty much all you need to know about getting an emergency travel certificate from the Nigerian High Commission in London. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any specific questions about the process, please drop a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, to share it, so as to ensure that people are informed and they know, they know, you know, because a lot of this information with regards to the timings, for example, is not on the website, right? Um, I really hope you found that useful and I will see you guys on my next video. Bye.